Thank you, Ms. Vijaya. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, first on our agenda is um, OPEB and our benefits. Mr. Haddo? A couple things. Uh, we sent some information last week to you all. Mm -hmm. I compiled it and put it in this document. So there's not any changes from the three attachments except it's now one document. Perfect. The one new piece that from that one document that is probably new to you is when you talk about, now I'm going to come back around to this, when you talk about, about how many employees are going to be impacted by the <coughs> years, that number, the one five, okay. 156 and 274, Thank you. those are the number of employees that are being impacted when it was presented to the um, So with no further ado, I can go through this and project it, but you have the document in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'm going to just pull down and you can follow along, and I know several of you have taken notes mm -hmm. of the questions last, last week would be my, my guess or over here in the conversation mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we started. Just know from a presentation standpoint, these are all the benefits that we provide our employees. So it's a real quick, hey Dan, what is, what is the current employee get um, in the world of GMSD? Well, the medical, when there's concern, which is the employee assistance program. The board on those two, the board subsidizes taxpayer money for those two, those two issues. At a certain per employee per month rate for the concern, or with the medical at a certain percentage based on the home premium. Everything else that you see, just to catch up to speed, is we made some changes with some bid processes that were shared earlier on, maybe a month or two months ago, mm -hmm. with some of the voluntary benefits that through our open enrollment that the employees had a chance to choose. All the open enrollment visits have been taking place at the school. We're still doing some open enrollment for the board, the district office, and for the new hires, and also for our retirees, just to catch up to speed. But if you look at those voluntary benefits, they pay, fully paid for the for the Delta Dental, fully paid for the Davis Vision, fully paid for the their Dare, long-term disability, fully pay into the flexible spending accounts, and what have you with the other American Fidelity products, um, just, so, just so you get that. The Valak Supplementary Retirement is a, they, they pay if they want to contribute to maybe a 401k or a 403b, whichever one it is, um, just to give you a broad picture of what mm -hmm. that looks like. Um, Life insurance, in the past, just legacy, Shelby County, did, Shelby County pay for that life insurance for the employees, or was that an So option? life insurance, you can add to life insurance. So okay. I can add additional life okay. insurance to what the, what the district provides. Okay. So in the current rate, of, if I die, I think it's two times my salary, up okay. to $300,000 threshold. Um, if I'm a retiree, it's a $50,000 threshold for a one-time annual salary. But know that I think that that's where the confusion is, is I can add, I can buy some more long-term life insurance. And if I age life insurance, I think my wife probably wants me to do that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that, that's how it works. So that's a voluntary deal. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Just sure you're um, what you have, though, is that other post-employment benefits. And here's where it really kind of gets into, um, let me go back to the front end. If you were to change the sample of the new policy language, actually, let me go this next part, which is the, the employee meetings that we had, and never made that suggestion. I think Suzanne and Kevin were behind that, Melissa, to go out there, or maybe all of you, <coughs> is to head to the schools. And when you head to the schools, present. And we did that all five schools. And we did that probably right when the committee, I'm trying to time, it was a little tight window, but I'm glad we did it because when we hit all the schools, this is what they saw. And this is what we presented to them. And we did it in a large group faculty meeting for those that wanted to attend. But then we told those people that, hey, tell your colleagues and your coworkers, come see us. And we're, so we were out there all day. And the response to that, that was, was powerful because I'll get into that because I think, hey, what, what was the employees take on all this? And, and so you're going to share some of that. Um, and I'll be glad to answer questions on that part. But just note, the language that we used was is that um, we borrowed some of the language from our current policy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at that language, and if you look at the why now and the bounce back provision and the years of service eligibility, all that came into tiers and who, what tier did you fall into? And the new concept and all that is that bounce back provision. And so if you ask, hey, historically, where did that come about? That came about from watching some of our current retirees jump to another system. And that other system offers them benefits. However, they were forced to take those benefits because we were providing them those, we were providing them those benefits. So here with this bounce back provision is if I, Dan Hanna, go work for the Upper Arlington School District up in Columbus, Ohio, and they offer me medical benefits, I have to jump on those benefits. So that's a cost savings. So everything you're seeing is kind of a cost savings. 
or if I then had to leave the Upper Arlington School District, um, I'm allowed to bounce back into the tier that I left. And I'm going to go over the tiers here in, in a minute. But just know that concept's a new concept, and the shared does shared bias from, from NIHAR, the actuary from Indianapolis, who had some experiences throughout the, throughout the country of different ways to look at to look at these benefits. So that's kind of a new concept. The why now, and I'm kind of jumping around, is because it's it's not cost effective nor efficient to continue to carry the burden of, of the retirees as these cohorts continue to grow. Um, so this tier, this I think tier you stuff. You need developed. to use stronger language than that. We can't continue to afford to pay for the benefits that we have. It's unsustainable, and it's going to happen in all the other districts too. It's not something um, that we can pay for. Thank you. So I'm going forward, and you're going to see these tiers in color. So don't get caught up in the, in the tier language. What we told, not yet, because you're going to see it in the okay. January study. What we told people was, is, um, you know, what to consider as you go through this. Um, so <coughs> all of this is the, the real benefit, to, the real um, outstanding features of benefits is everyone is worried about their medical cost. And then everyone is worried about, hey, what Medicare mm -hmm. is going to look like. And everyone, you know, life insurance kind of jumps in there a little bit because it's an added benefit. So all those three, the medical benefit, and when you're talking about medical benefit, you're talking about, hey, did you get your years of service? Mm -hmm. And once you got your years of service, what's the gap look like to get to Medicare? And then once you're in Medicare, what does that look like for people? And so all these are going to change and going to be tweaked depending on those variables, as well as the life insurance. So when you look at those three, those are the three that we're really talking about. And you're going to see those change just a little bit depending on the plan. And there's two plans that are being recommended based on a financial threshold. And the financial threshold that we came up with, and Kevin's over here, but, but I think it was $820,000 um, a year that we had to fund up until we get to the total, um, the total score. But I think it's, you're looking the at the AAL. Yeah, the AAL. The 820 um, is the uh, ADC, or the actuarial determined contribution, mm -hmm. which is the annual contribution. Mm -hmm. Our employees weren't told of the financial world behind it. They were just told, hey, how does this impact you? And what's this look like and, and how you may have to plan ahead for it. The other deal historically when we started this two years ago was, and this comes from our superintendent, I thought it was a wonderful initiative and a wonderful move, was, hey Dan, these people are real close <coughs> to retirement. It shouldn't be a cold shower for them. In other words, hey, you're shocking me, you're shocking my system and you're, you're going to cause chaos in my world that I planned for all these years and then boom, you're getting ready to do this. So that cold shower mentality is something that to hang on to because philosophically, we kind of stayed the line on all that, um, but you're going to see it with the colors. Everyone makes a little bit of a sacrifice, depending on which plan, plan A or, or plan B, that meets the financial threshold that Kevin just mentioned. Um, everyone's making a little bit of a sacrifice. It's how much of a sacrifice, who's, who's going to, who's, who's, um, which tier group, um, and how, how does it look for that tier group. Um, so I'm going to continue with this, because here's where you get into the colors, and this is probably where maybe your questions come in. Um, if you look at that tier group and you think of gray, there's really three colors. There's the gray, and I don't know what color that is. But pink, <coughs> pink, green. pink, and green. Um, so gray, pink, and green, you're going to see two plans, and you're going to see little tweaks with which each one. Of them. When you talk about the gray people, and the gray is easy for me to remember gray? because yeah. I am gray headed, and I am in the gray, the gray cycle. The gray people. That is, if you look at the eligibility, that one has an eligibility requirement that currently mirrors TCRS. So when you talk about TCRS, you're talking about pension. We're talking about a defined benefit. You're talking about something that's unrelated to the medical, unrelated to Medicare, and unrelated, unrelated to life insurance. You're just talking about a monthly defined benefit that's going to come to people that meet that eligibility. So that's going to be the only in the gray do they have that minimum age, 55 and 15 years of service, or 25 years of service. Everything else is you've got to have, you either got to be age 60 and 15 years of service, or 30 years of service. And let me give you a little history behind that. I thought it was brilliant whoever recommended that because most people, you don't want to, in my world or in the teacher's world, that 30 years is a pension piece where your benefit multiplier is the most significant to you. People from TCRS tell you do not retire before you get your 30 years in, especially if you have 25, 26, 27, 28. So we didn't think it would be that much of an impact for those people that are chasing 30 years because they're going to walk away from too much towards their pension if they if they uh, if they leave before they get that 30 years. So that's where that that, that little adjustment came in, in the play. You do see, and I'm just going to stay with the tier one so you get comfortable with language. If you look, I hit the medical, 
and I hit the Medicare, and I hit the life insurance. Those three variables are going to continue, those three benefits are going to continue to cycle through this conversation. If you look at the medical and the gray-headed people, nothing changes. Not the same active employee rate, whatever we're paying for them, that's what we're going to pay for our retirees up until they're Medicare eligible. That's going to be with, and I'm going to be quick, that's going to be with the Tier 1 and the Tier 2 employee. But we're going to cover your active employee rate just like we were retiring. So keep that in mind as we go through this. With the Medicare, here is where there's a little bit of change. The Medicare is, for the gray, is post-65, assuming that Medicare doesn't get chucked and jive with the current <coughs> administration um, and how that plays out. But post-65 benefit, it's $150 to supplement their part <coughs> to supplementary insurance to cover the, the Medicare debt. Whatever Medicare does, doesn't pick up, we provide $150 for the individual. Or if they have a dependent, a spouse, or a, a child under the age of 26, we, we give them $300 stipend dependents. Right now, that change is, is currently, if I would have retired before, in, in June, before July 1st, um, we give them an option. And the option is, is you can get on a supplementary insurance that the districts provide. And let me, and let me clarify some of the language. So with this gray section and with the pink session, section, this is the same benefit that our current employees have so if we change nothing if we just continue the same process that's what all of these employees get so they are staying on our plan at the same rates as our current employees these are the groups that have the OPEB uh, amount of money that we have to fund this is the money that we have to essentially put into a savings account to save for them in retirement that's the expensive benefit that we are giving them the choice to switch to the Medicare subsidy once they turn 65, Medicare takes over as your primary health insurance, and then we are paying a portion for that subsidy for that second part of that. This is, and so just to clarify what you're doing, this is all the same that they currently have. Um, the difference that Mr. Haddo is going to highlight is what you get for either life insurance or for your spouse is what changes between these two plans. And so that's really what this board is going to have to discuss is what do they think has more value to the employees is life insurance post 65 or uh, covering their spouses. So. so the employee comes to us and the employee <coughs> thinks just and to these employee meetings and we go over, hey, what tier are you in? And then we decide, hey, if, if you're in this tier, this is what you get. But the going on from Medicare to life insurance, if you look at the life insurance, the pre-65 and the post-65 stays the same in this plan for that tier one employee. Um, it's that one time your annual salary up to 50000 max. In Plan B, it changes. So Plan B, if you're taking notes, it's that gray area post-65 that that life insurance is eliminated. Um, we're not providing that life insurance. So, so that's where when did you got some where I got some questions. And there's some people saying, you mean to tell me that I'm, I'm losing my life insurance? Yes, yeah, so you gotta, mm -hmm. you got to buy some additional voluntary life insurance. Um, through, the, through your own pocket. And so the in discussion, the discussion that we have in, in B, yes, yes. Yeah. we can provide That's a supplemental health insurance plan that is fully funded by the employees. Employee. Just like we bid out vision or dental, mm -hmm. we can offer that mm -hmm. service to them that mm -hmm. they can they can choose to take. Um, so that's really the yeah. teeter-totter here that we have to discuss. That's a good question. Yeah, to be, uh, because when I looked at the biggest thing is the life insurance. Yes. So. In Plan B, it drops post 65. However, my question rests with if pre 65 you've had the life insurance and you're going to retire, you've hit 65, you can still continue with that same policy. Can you continue with that same policy at employees' expense? Have to check, but that'd be a great yeah. move. Because <coughs> it would be can kind you pick of a it up? Yeah, be easy you pick it up, but you don't lose yeah. because so, if you have medical issues yep. mm -hmm. getting a new life insurance policy is going to be burdensome right. if, depending on your situation and if you could continue that policy at the employee's expense not the, the district but you can continue on with that policy that would be and I think that's going to be that our would be decision because from the insurance company they don't care yeah. who's paying the, that's right. the right. amount of money for this it's just as a district are we offering that, that to our 
because that's your point. Yeah. Because it's just the administrative. Yes, that's yeah. an administrative. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's something that we're going to have to go out and say, hey, insurance company, right. will you let us do this? It's just because, because the money would just funnel would, through would in theory. As a, as a <coughs> 60 some odd year old person who didn't think I needed to do this, now I've got to think beyond, you know, think about life insurance that I didn't anticipate thinking about. And maybe no, I have a heart condition or maybe I have diabetes. Something's developed since I had my Or something's insurance, developed. Well, I think they call that evidence of insurability. And so my question is, would, would, is this something that, so that you wouldn't have to administer? Would they, the insurance be willing to just transfer? Well, it's, not a, it's not a challenge for us to or, administer the dental, so you could, the vision. So you're saying the, you're willing to pass through for us right now. This is so just you're willing to consider after they've retired administrating it for yes. them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what happens is uh, money is taken out of their retiring okay. paycheck. So there's a way to do it without adding additional yeah. yes. work to the district. Just, another just like they normally yeah. Just like it happens okay. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to move forward on the gray. I'm going to go into the, the world of pink. Here, again, the medical is just like the gray for the employee. Uh, so if you see that, I'm going to look at it before I say that. Yeah, act, now here, though, the dependent. So I'm going to use me again because I don't. My wife would look at me and say, hey, Dan, you're taken care of. However, for my wife's medical stuff, she's going to get a $300 stipend, monthly stipend to cover her to find her own plan, to shop her own plan. Um, so that $300 stipend, pay attention to that. So if you do 300 times 12, which is uh, a month, you're talking about $3,600 back then. Mm -hmm. um, and there, though, and this is what I tell people, and this is kind of a, a not fatalistic, but maybe a reality. By the time that person gets their 30 years of service in, who knows what that looks like? And who knows if that's a rich benefit or a poor benefit? Because you don't know if medical science has caught up to something to say, hey, medical costs has gotten cheaper, or has it gone higher? And so if you look at the, the development, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent. The reason why hospitals are struggling, because they've taken away hospital work and they put it at these um, daily places, med centers, mm -hmm. where you don't you stay overnight, the, the, the outpatient versus the inpatient. So if you look at that little development, you don't know what it's going to look like. 30 years from now, but that would be a benefit that you're putting in there. But I, for some reason, I imagine that this policy will probably be revised based sure. on the timing and circumstances. Sure. But for currently, what we're telling people is this is what you can expect to get in that tier group. Quick question. That $300, are taxes taken out of that before they get it? Yes. yes. That's what I'm just, I'm just yes. saying. Yes. So it's really so not it's true not $300. Yes. No, Going on with the Medicare subsidy, that is something. no different yeah. than the gray. Looking at the life insurance, and I got to scroll down a little bit. Um, that is no different than the gray. Um, so there, if you look at the little phrase, not cold shower mindset, but kind of a planning ahead mindset, is we're trying to tell people, hey, you need to plan ahead for this if this shit happens, because that's a, that's a, uh, the dependents take a little bit of a hit. Here's what surprised me but, in talking to them. But let's clarify again. So what are they having to plan for that they're not currently planning for? The change in the mindset is solely for your spouse. So if my, and what we're seeing with a lot of these individuals are that their spouses are employed. Mm -hmm. And okay. what you don't see in the business world is this type of benefit in retirement. Mm -hmm. And so we're having a lot of, and I'm not stereotyping, there are CEOs who come over and say, great, we just picked up life yes. insurance. Or they are gainfully employed people who are coming over and jumping onto mm -hmm. our benefit plan uh, to get that insurance. So the planning that they have to do for this, the planning mindset is planning for your spouse's Spouse. health insurance. The person I've been, Jason wasn't there, but anecdotally when you talk to the teacher, <coughs> it didn't shock me, but there are several teachers that said, hey, my spouse, my, uh, not to be generous, but my, my husband is self-employed and he's dependent on this, on this medical benefit. And this would be a little bit of a change for us. So that was the, the one that kind of yeah, that there's a lot of female teachers that spouses are self-employed and they like the benefit, the fully medical benefit. So that that came up in the So that that is the negative with this plan is that they they essentially have because these are the people who are they could be at year 19, so they may be 11 years from retirement, and they've got 11 years to save Figure for their spouse's health insurance and retirement. So that that's the one drawback for this plan. Any questions on the pink? What you're going to see on plan B, and I'm going to show it to you, so you don't have to be Plan B is that active, the medical for the mm -hmm. active employee rate, it also includes the dependents. It's 
that they're great fully, benefit. Uh, that they're that they're taken care of, just like in Plan Gray. But what they lose is I think they lose something on the I think they probably lose that post sixty five life insurance. Mm -hmm. They do. You, they do. That's yeah. the difference. Before you go to Plan B. Do both of the plans have the bounce back provision? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So we haven't talked, discussed the bounce back provision, yet, have we? Or he, he went over it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's but it's a constant. Yes. So mm -hmm. it is a recommendation that. And that will be a new administrative that's process yes. that's going to have to be um, taken yes. over, which I know that y'all talked about. But that is something that. Honor system. Going with tier three, and I'm doing this by memory. I apologize, but if you look, that eligibility is 30 years of service. I think that this, no, I'm, I'm wrong. This is a uh, medical benefit where everything is stipend based. Both, and this is, both greens are the same. They marry each other on plan A and plan B. So going through that, the medical is we're, after you get that eligibility requirement, we're giving you $300 per month per individual. Yes, it's, it's taxed. We're giving you $600 if you have a dependent, a spouse or, or those uh, children under the age of 26. The Medicare subsidy is just like the others. The life insurance is pre-65 only. Um, one time you're going to sign with $50,000 max. The, back, the bounce back provision, like Jason was saying, is constant. More planning ahead mindset. And what we're coming across, and I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize this, or at least I didn't until you started going to some of these meetings. The Tennessee Treasury Department, um, TCRS, is really trying to do an umbrella approach to, um, and I think they call it power. Not only do they want you to have your defined contribution, now they're going a hybrid plan for these new employees, which is a 401k piece that goes into this 401k, and you may limit a little bit of what the, what the uh, what's being contributed to the defined benefit. But they're also providing a wraparound service with maybe some 401k, 403b investments. But they're also, if you if you pay attention to it, they're trying to do some of the college planning, and then the, uh, I guess maybe uh, I don't know, maybe 457bs and the college tuition planning. So they're trying to get it all under this one umbrella. So when we're talking to teachers about this, we've come across someone that works this region of the state, and his name's Alan Landstreet. And so he's been coming in, talking to our employees on an individual basis. What we want to do with this tier group, and this is planning ahead strategically, is to invest soundly, um, because you don't know what the future holds. And so Alan, he's agreed, and when we come in, you know, probably on it, the new employee orientation would be one, but then other employees, whether you're my age and headed, or whether you're the middle tier, or whether it's the young tier, is hey, he's willing to come out and talk to all these different tier groups on investment strategies. So we're really trying to, uh, you know, our, our guiding principle is to give them this to dignify people. And a lot of that is through compensation and, and benefits. But this is what these two look like. Um, but that green, if you look at the green with plan B, it's the same, so, that, so they marry each other. So I want to jump, and this, but I want to slow down a little bit. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. And I, and I will jump on the bandwagon and say that and this is something that Mr. Jones has talked about too, that <coughs> eventually as a board and as a, a district office, we need to look at how are we educating our staff and do we develop programs that encourage them to invest, encourage them to save. And so, and so I know Mr. Jones has had some really creative ideas talking about how can we do this for employees and so there may be things that we're bringing forward uh, to y'all to say what can we do to really help them help close the gap. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I do. Some mm -hmm. the yeah. The other, the other piece that I, that I want to say is eventually these three care groups, you covered the cost of their own pay. And then does that free up a certain amount of money? When does that free up that certain amount of money that you covered it and what it did that Um, remind me, I know that we had this conversation in committee, but I cannot remember. What does the state provide? Like, if we provided nothing, and the, the, I know that we, the yeah, teachers I'll, get a benefit, what, what do they get? So, what's you have different types of districts across okay, the state. Okay. But what's provided by them is retirement. Okay. So, all teachers are invested, and now we essentially have two different plans. Mm -hmm. So we have people who are legacy, and it changed essentially three years ago, okay. that it was a defined benefit plan. Every month they're taking a certain amount out of my paycheck, they look at my highest five years, consecutive years in a row, and there's a little formula they can do, and they say, this is how much you're going to get in retirement. Okay. Um, so that's one group of teachers and employees who are getting that. So we, we, we do it for all of our employees. The other group of um, employees that we have are the new employees. So in the past three years, 
if they have come on, they're still getting money taken out towards TCRs, which is their retirement. Okay. But it's more like a 401k. Uh, the state it realized they couldn't keep investing in a defined benefit plan. Right, so right. So what they have is this kind of sliding scale for the employees. And so it, it does a prediction, too, about how much they're going to invest and how much they're going to get out of this but it assumes a certain percentage that they're going to make off the stock market or their investment. Right, if so they keep investing and maybe they, they need to add more, they need to they bump need it up. Okay. So those are the two different groups. So you are given a retirement. So okay. that's what's common across the board of the state. Okay. But then you have two different types of districts. You have districts that have health insurance like we do. Okay. Um, the majority of districts do not provide OPEB benefits. A lot of them are on the state uh, health insurance plan, which is uh, – a big group that they all invest in and they don't provide post-employment benefits but then you have some that are self uh, have self-insured right. uh, in plans like we do and so we have historically offered uh, OPEP benefits okay so we will be much more in line with with what the rest of the state is doing uh, when we do this because most of those people are on the, the state plan we looked at the state health insurance plan when we were first created as a district mm -hmm. the benefits are really not rich really high deductibles mm -hmm. um, it was not comparable to what we had uh, with Shelby County Schools so that's where you get right. retirement. Yeah. Well, quick question do you have a dollar figure of the difference between plan A and plan B? Is I can show well I'll, I'll show you that okay. but then I got I have to figure out maybe which one matches up, but I'll show you okay. I think it's about um, you don't have to be Twenty to forty thousand dollars. Okay. I thought it was thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in that range. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I just was curious what the dollar. That's how much you not a significant amount of money, money for the two plans. Yeah. So really, we need to talk about. That's what I wanted. What you're getting. Money was a factor. For some of the other plans that we looked yes. at. It yes. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that weren't on the table. That's right. This is recommended plan B, and just to re rehash it, you know, I may go some other way. If you look at the post, the gray-headed people, um, which is myself, I don't want to pay anyone, um, post 65, no benefit is provided with the life insurance. And like Jason was saying, is that the supplementary insurance, that is taken away. There was one committee member, he's still an active committee member, who mm -hmm. said, Dan, hey, this is a richer benefit for people. If they know how to plan and enroll into supplementary insurance to fill the gap with Medicare, does he really like getting $150? a month and I did add an attachment I think the state provides supplementary insurance I may have added an attachment a while back it seems to be it's about $132 a month for that Medi Medicare guy yeah. he did not seem to think that this is an unreasonable amount I mean with his research that he had done he felt very good about the supplemental insurance he was able to get and it is, it is some, of income. Our, some of our recent retirees are mm -hmm. going for the supplement exactly going for the subsidy Sub yeah. the subsidy yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so just know that that's what's changed is that is the is the life insurance and that one is a you know depending on which attorney you talk to and I've talked to two is hey you know one was hey don't even know they get life insurance benefit Dan that's not gonna be big of a hit but then the other attorney said Dan would you like to have fifty thousand dollars taken away from your family um, I thought you know that's a good point and then it the, was really cute with the, talking to teachers is that one teacher was saying hey but I know my nieces and nephews they, they're going to take care of this life insurance and they're going to give me a good funeral pay for my casket and the other teacher says no they're not you're dead they're going to have a fine party without us <laughs> I thought uh, well, that's, that's, that's pretty good so just kind of depends on how cremation you that's insurance. the way to go um, <laughs> that's right. it's a benefit so you have to look at that, you have to look at that. Um, the tier two like I was telling you is the active employee for both retiree and dependents up until Medicare eligible so that comes back around the life insurance was yet yeah, no life insurance benefit is provided. The green stays the green. Nothing, nothing going on with the green. Um, so that's what was expressed to our employees. And probably if you said, hey, how many employees did you reach? I think it was very favorable, but I did not have people sign in and take names and all that stuff. I think it was very favorable based on um, going out to all the five schools. So they made that recommendation. I appreciate that recommendation. Kind of all spent. This next part is there is a and i wish you were here we have a uh, an intern that's helping us out a little bit she's trying to learn some policy language here was your challenge put this in policy language. i already had a template <laughs> yeah. i already had one developed yeah. way back but this is what a and a sample new policy would look like and i only bring this up to you because the other one that's out there right now can be a little bit cumbersome yes hey if you follow here or this mm -hmm. day here mm -hmm. this 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 mm -hmm. 
this tried to simplify. So it's not, all this is, is good for the active, for the first couple pages, and I hope I highlighted it. Um, it's here that you're going to see, hey, what would it look like? So we put it together, and everything in those tiers was discussed, mm -hmm. and this is what it would look like in policy language. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't, I didn't do plan A and plan B. I think this may be plan A, but I'm not sure. Uh, but if you look at the policy, this is just a sample of what it would actually look like. And what I envision happening is, is hey, Dan, you know, once the board gives the recommendation which one to, to approach, plan A or plan B, go ahead and develop the policy. This is all draft. Make sure the policy reads what it should read. Uh, probably have it vetted through maybe maybe the attorney. Um, the bounce back provision kind of has my attention. Is that legally sound? Can we do that legally? Mm -hmm. um, that has my attention a little bit. Um, but this is what it would look like. Um, and so I'm kind of moving quick through it. I did highlight a couple of tiers, years of service, and bounce right. back provision would be the would be the, 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 the couple changes in there. The one thing on the um, the chart, which I thought was very helpful. Um, on C on page four. Um, on the retiree life insurance where we say yes, I was wondering if we should put the dollar amount since it's different than the active. I think I did on this one. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I, think I put 50, I didn't see. No, I meant in this chart in the policy. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can, yeah. I'll I mean, it just, yeah, just so yep. that it's, I mean, if yep. we're going to, as, as far as yep. policy going forward. Yeah, so the policy needs to define what that benefit is. Right, just I because it, if, you, if you revert back to what the current employees get, then it's different. Uh, so let me make sure I got it. That would be one times annual salary, fifty thousand dollars max. Is that what you're yeah, that's what, yeah, just in All this chart. Through. Yeah, well, or yeah, just in the just in the policy piece that you have. Keep so I'm going to leave what keep it's going down. Down. I'm going to say where it is. Keep going. Keep going. Keep up, going up, down. Up, yeah. Up, keep going. No, no other up, way. Other way. Keep going. You got it. Keep going. One more. It's on you. page nine. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that one right there. Right here. So take that number and put it in so see where it says tier one yes 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 I'm gonna yeah. put number yep. yeah yeah once we decide on which plan right yeah. right so I'm gonna go by this because I think I've explained it um, and then I don't know if there's anything left oh the addendum this was tricky and I did this I want you to take note on this and begin my address this room may not be appreciated except by me because I'll have it myself uh, is the addendum was done when I was in St. Petersburg, Florida. I was trying, I was on vacation, which is fine. I like to work. Um, but I was kind of looking at it thinking, hey, what changed from the current Can policy? Can defeat the purpose, Dan. Yeah, what changed from the current policy? So if you look at the yellow, it's the eligibility criteria. This kind of change and all this language employed on or after July 1, 2014, just know that changed to tiers. Um, so if you look at my yellow, that's what that means. This one kind of has my attention now. Uh, this hit from talking to an employee. She worked for Shelby County Schools, but she had to take FMLA or she had to take a leave or she had to step back and then she came because of family considerations and then she came back and hey, Dan, where am I? Do these years count? Um, so that combined continuous service, combined continuous service may be changing. I want to include her. I don't want to penalize her if she had the years. Uh, falling in that tier one. So how many people are there like So they that? work for us for eight years, then come back for us for seven years. And then they came back on GMSD. You know, they, they may have worked in, in, in Shelby County Schools. So maybe not continuous, but combined. Yes. Mm -hmm. Years yes. of service. So just be aware of that. And I ran that, that by sense. the actuary. Hey, how much is this going to ding us? And he said, hey, not much. I can't imagine. It's not going to be it's not gonna that much. Um, so be aware of some of okay. that red. Um, no, it was two years, depending on which you know, year you started or when you worked. It, this actuary report is based on an assumption, assumption that you, you contributed to the medical plan a year before you retired. Yeah. Um, so that simplifies the policy. So if you look at that, the purple means that it matches what we currently have going on. Um, so I was trying to be... Oh, that helps to know. The purple right. means hope. And the, purple, some the purple looks a little bit like the black in my eyes right now. That's why you need readers. Hush this. <laughs> I can't come on any. <laughs> <laughs> Just give in, Amy. So, so some of that language that you're seeing in there is, you know, it gets a little bit convoluted. What I like to think is we simplify the policy um, through all these, you know, through all these changes. Uh, simplify policies in my, in my mind is a better policy, even though details are important. Um, but it seemed like this, this current one, there are a lot of, a lot of um, groups of people that were different. Eligibility requirements based on when they started, how many years they were with MCS, Memphis City Schools, Shelby County Schools, or UMSC. Um, so you're going to see a, a real policy, uh, hopefully a policy redesign. It's, it's 
it's a benefit to everybody. So that's what you have in front of you. Um, I think the decision points, and if I were to add a page, hey, the decision point is how important is life insurance versus, versus how important is um, full medical for that second tier group and their spouse versus a stipend. I think those are the two decisions. That's points. the question. Yeah. When you talked to them, was was there a plan, particularly with tier one and tier two employees, that they tended to lean more for, or was it always kind of depends on which tier group you're in? Yeah, yeah it where you were in and Dana and I disagree on this one because, uh -oh. and it's a good disagreement. Yeah. For for me, the value for my wife and my family would be that I get to carry her on the my health insurance. The value of the life insurance is a smaller amount that we can plan for uh, to deal with the life insurance. And I think about what's the value for us for life insurance. We want to pay for our funerals. Uh, we don't want to leave debt to our children. Um, and if we're talking about when we're 65, 70, hopefully they're not dependent on us. <laughs> <laughs> if all goes according to plan. <laughs> so, so that's the plan. But I, I think, uh, Dan, you see the life insurance as being more valuable, don't you? No, my script, and I was afraid you guys were going to ask me this, is to stay neutral. Because when you're out there talking to people, it's important to both parties. Mm -hmm. And so for me to say, hey, Dan, you're, you know, t maybe two or three years out of this, I think it'd be very selfish to say, hey, life insurance. <laughs> 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 What's the cost? Of, what, what would the that cost be for the life insurance um, for them to, to pick yeah. it up on their own? That would through, yeah, through I'd us. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look at that. Could we do that? Because yeah, that, that would help. It's very inexpensive. That's what I figured. Um, if you pick up the uh, AARP magazine, you can get it real cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Several dollars a month. Several dollars yeah, a month. That's a fair. There's it can't a lot be that. of people vying for that yeah. business out there. I think. Um, yeah. But so you're you're talking a few dollars a month. Yeah. It should be cheaper. It'd be them interesting if you could find that. See what we're see what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's a possibility because I at that for them to stay on. That's good. But I, but in part of this education piece and preparing and planning ahead. That's also something important that we include, not just that for how much it would cost for them, right? The right, that they mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. if if that's the plan we choose, that this is something that they need to plan for, and that there is value in life insurance. Because <coughs> a lot of people don't carry, don't think about it till they get to be. Yeah. Right. Not well, no, till they, well, I mean, till they hit re close to retirement right. age, and then it's suddenly important, <laughs> and, it's more, and it's more expensive. Yes. <coughs> But see, I can see why the medical piece of it would be more valuable, yeah. keeping my dependent on, particularly mm -hmm. depending on the health of my dependent. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, because I know Ben would have retired a year ago, except for medical. Right. I mean, he's staying right. on for medical reasons. The other piece I look at, and I think this that I'm glad the listener brought up, hey, Danny Miller, show the numbers. 156 people could be greatly impacted by that one move to take their dependence off the yeah. medical. Whereas 105 people, based on Kevin to my right, hey, ARP is not that, not that uh, costly for life insurance. If you just use situational ethics or um, logic, American Contrast logic, because you could probably lean towards, hey, tier two people need to be protected. <coughs> get bigger bang for your dollar for that medical group and those dependents. Because three hundred dollar stipend does not go far in the world of insurance. No, especially not when it's, that's pre-tax. Yeah. Well, if you're looking at buying your own insurance, I buy mine. It's eight hundred dollars a month. Yep. That's what I'm saying. But I've already paid for my funeral and have two hundred fifty thousand dollar life insurance. Policy, so. <laughs> well, it's a big so party. The life insurance <laughs> or the health insurance. I mean. <laughs> Out of all your can you add him? Uh oh. Yeah, I'm worth a hell of a lot more dead than I am. <laughs> so that'll be a yeah, that'll be a to do. Busy. I'll get back to you on that. Probably yeah. within 24 hours before you have it. Yeah, so they'll me to channel it through. Or I think just all of us. All of us. Just send it to all of us. us. Yeah. That would be great. I think that would give us an idea. So, Mr. Hatter, next step for us at the business meeting on the 19th is the objective then for the board to vote on the, the new policy. policy with the 
choice of planes is that your objective yeah if you give me the license to on that section is just know I may have a plan a plan A in there instead of plan B not to bias your just so you can see what the policy looks like yes so the goal is to have the policy written and you can say hey you switch this plug in the plug in, plug in the right right plane even yes. though I want to put one up there right for you to right, see right. That. and then makes uh, sense. yeah so then you look at the policy revision and yes we vote on this policy and we either approve it or we want amendments or whatever you want to play it well and thank you for doing good doing the numbers because I think being able to see the number of employees that are impacted you know, by that one, you know, by the different changes. I mean, life insurance is pretty much all of them, but that's a big, that's a, a big number. Thank you, Alyssa, for all your work too, Ms. Stratton. Kevin has been instrumental. Yes, so and Mr. Jones. Yeah, we're, we're here to Mr. Stop here. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. Any other questions? Great job. Thank you. Yep, thank you. No more questions? Next on the agenda is, um, well, just one thing to point out, because Kevin's done a great job, um, because it you have to first figure out the policy to give the actuaries to figure out the what the numbers are going to come up with, but then you have to have the financial piece of how much does that cost us every year to, to get that done, and Kevin's done a great job of, yes. from a management perspective. And we've been working on this a very long time. Yes. <laughs> so you have uh, the investment management agreement with the district and the U.S. Bank. Mm -hmm. Just to look at uh, it's the, I guess, printed page after page 16 or 17. And this is on the investment management mm -hmm. agreement. Oh. All the actuary assumptions assume a 7% rate of return on our investments. Yes. And our actuary and U.S. Bank got together. This is their approach. And this is a one year contract with the uh, US Bank of flat fee of ten thousand dollars. And then you've also got a, an investment report on the OTEF Trust from US Bank as of May thirty first. So this will show you, I guess like on the third page, mm -hmm. the valuation of one point two million amount in the uh, trust fund and our investment income is right at 9700 for the month so we're we're right on track mm -hmm. and again i think are we the only school district of the municipalities that's fully funding their opec mm -hmm. thank you i know this is, we've really been working on this since we opened the doors so it's finally come to fruition here of funding our post-employment benefits. So Mr. Haddow will, again will send us all some fr information on the cost of retired life, retired life insurance and if it is possible to um, have them extend on their own. <coughs> but their same policy. Yeah. The cost of that, yeah. So they, they don't miss a beat. Yeah. Right. Or just the logistics to yeah. accomplish that. Right. I think, I think if it is, I think it's going to be small for that, that knowledge for employees that the impact is right for them to pick minimal, that up on the back minimal, end would be minimal compared to compared to what they could get through the 11 through 19 years. Right. Any further questions? Thank you. Very thorough. Yes. Well, thank awesome. you. Great thank job. You. Great job. Next on the agenda is the superintendent evaluation for 2018. I think it, we ended our last meeting, or a couple meetings ago, um, there was um, a couple sample evaluations mm -hmm. to look at, mm -hmm. um, just um, so you could see them. But I think the main thing to talk about today is, is um, if we want to change our process, if we think we need to make any changes to the um, evaluation. So that we can get those into place before um, July 1. Um, having spoken with, um, spoken to TSBA, I really think it would be wise of us to use the TSBA service, the discussion about training, the discussion about making sure everybody's on the same page, and the use of a third party, um, I think is wise. And for $2,000, 
it's a good use of money to, to have the process be trans as transparent as possible, um, as thorough across the board for each of us, and they provide a mid-year evaluation, which I think is also helpful. I definitely think we need to change the format. Um, and they work the with you on that too. Um, I liked one of the formats that we looked at. Um, I did some research on different, how different <coughs> districts or different states primarily do theirs and their recommendations um, and found some really good ones and some ones that, that really I thought, um, I know New York's was a particular favorite of mine because it broke down, um, if you were doing like board relations and it was going bouncing through, it explained what a five was, what a four was in that particular top area. So that it, it was completely broken down. So it was a lot more reading, but it was very self explanatory because a five, four, three, two, one is different depending on the area that you're I mean, depending on what topic you're you're focusing on for your evaluation. And so they it, it I thought that one was particularly good. Um, New York State. Mm -hmm. I have a um, copy. Miss Miss Lander shared yeah, it with I, me. I, shared so I, it with I made her. some copies. Okay. I would have stayed with y'all, but it was like yeah, twenty my pages. Con my concern with TSBA is they're not providing the service on the right things. Mm -hmm. So I think the issue that we had with my evaluation was defining what each of those numbers means. Okay. Um, Lisa. And having examples of what each of those things are, and the example I so even if they came in and we went with them. All they're doing is coming in, comprising. Y'all aren't really getting she training on them. what is a four. Did you give Amy one? Yeah, I have okay. hers. And I don't yeah. care. This is yours, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's the full one I was reading. So what is a four? What is a five? All they're doing is tabulating and doing the scores and, and calculating it. So that's a good service. But I, I think the challenge is like when we have administrators who get certified to do evaluations, we have to watch videos. We say, this is how you justify what a five is. This is what you see what a four is. They go into weekend training, and I think they have to get recertified every year, and they watch videos, and they take tests on it. That's not what TSBA is going to give you all with the evaluation. The reason I like the New York one is it's very definitive where it says, this is what you see for exceeding expectations, or this is what you see if it is meeting, or this is what you see. So whatever we agree on that's all I would say is let's choose one that's that has more that it's really right. defined and I, I, don't I, I don't disagree about I that, that um, I, yeah um, what I would say about the TSBA is is the the feedback I got from them is that we could customize what we would want from them to your point so that you know as board members come and go <coughs> they could if we had something like this they could take the time as an objective person to say this is what it means that they would get to know our evaluation so I think to your point it's a good one I think it's a blend of two I think it's mm -hmm. a, a blend of objective of, of somebody else having to tabulate and trying to keep it neutral at the same time ensure <coughs> that we have the appropriate training and that we have the appropriate knowledge behind the evaluation what is it that we're trying to achieve um, I think a good combination of those two um, I also looked at double um, a SA had a white paper on evaluating superintendents and one of the things they did that I personally liked is they did a scale of zero to four so that a zero gave you the option of cannot judge which was my particular it, which y'all all know about my particular challenge that if you didn't feel like you had the experience the necessary information you had something you could do rather than just kind of guess so you could do that but Anyway, it's WASA, www.wasa.org. Yeah, okay. they've got great stuff on there. I, I love, love that, but WASA. Um, I, I find that appealing as well. You know, so, but you're so an exemplary profession, and, and I like the use of professional. Exemplary professional performance would be four. So that would be your top. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't think to make copies. No, 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 no that, that's, that's, that that's fine. Up. We can leave it. Yeah, it's all good. Um, oh, do you mind? Sure. And I think, too, just to take a step it's back, pages, so everybody has the, um, yeah. mm -hmm. it's in our folder. the evaluation. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the evaluation. And I do like the evaluation of the directors. I, I, like the, I like that format of having comment yes. section on there as well. Yes. I think yes. that was really think, good right there with it. I think comments would be good to have. But yeah. I just <laughs> say, just remember, too, um, in the policy, it says that 
we need to include because um, we've sort of talked about this too in relation to our strategic plan um, that there are, do have to be sections regarding um, student achievement relations with staff oh, yes. and personnel relations with board members which um, this does cover all those categories mm -hmm. very nicely and you could then add um, comments as well yeah, it is. but I think also too some of the things we've had some discussions um, you know this is our superintendent's personnel evaluation and how many people have their evaluations done in the public um, that that is a, a difficult task at times mm -hmm. and um, some states let you go into executive session and release a summation in the state of Tennessee we are not allowed to do that by law um, the same with um, the individual um, our individual board evaluations are public documents they can't be shredded um, same thing again that right. once we right. complete those yeah. those are public documents so um, we just need to keep all the, some of those things in mind oh yeah mm -hmm. but I think if we if, even with the zero to four ranking or whatever having that clarification of a zero is a I don't have an observed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like an NA. Exactly. Right. Like an exactly. NA. Right. And it doesn't count in the scoring. Um, the other thing that I want to, with the, that I think needs to change, and I think you and I kind of talked to, touched about this um, at one point. Um, I think when we do feel that there's a need for improvement, that if that's the score we're going to give, then we need to, we need to justify that. We need to make a comment because the expectation of not putting it in writing is difficult for any employee so that if we feel strong enough that we're going to do a two or below then we need to we need to enumerate what it what it is that concerns us and I think that's that's only fair and that is uh, part of our employee. policy as well number five all documentation will be supported by objective evidence if it right. is already stated. But, uh, but on the form we currently use we don't yes. decide it's not to I, do that i mean honestly having done yeah, yeah. yeah. this is a whole lot more user yes, friendly it is. yep um but i did like one of the things i liked about new york which i think you could easily do is the explanation of the rating scale yes yeah i so agree because i do think that there that there's some the, there's some differences mm -hmm. based on to your point yeah let's see the category that you're dealing with right um but i also think that because i think we should spend as much time on areas where we think maybe there's improvement but also the areas where we felt like there's been exceeding and so and I, think, I think I think that's, that's exactly I think, I think when, yeah exactly so equal. that when you anything other than just the ex, the meets or whatever that term is we come up with and I think I think it would give, be great to have that dialogue as well I absolutely if you okay. if you give a, a low score there needs to be but I think also if you give a five mm -hmm. there and has to be both ways right both ways um, what, one session, let everybody um, take look a moment go to look at it. Yeah. Go home, look, at, look at this one, and, and I mean, I think there's some agreement. And I did show this to the superintendent because he does have input too. Oh, absolutely. And I did show him this, and he felt comfortable with this one from New York. <coughs> but we can talk about, um, go home, look at this. Let's look at the. Um, my, re my request would be let's take the New York as the base, let's tweak it with Lakelands, Lakelands. and with uh, the comments and the scoring. With the NA and and create yes. something that, yeah kind of because like, that mean, one is so de it's it's like when we found the the scoring for the side I was you were reading my mind yeah um, I thought the same thing yeah mm -hmm. you know when we found those yes. and it's so defined about mm -hmm. what yeah. each one mm -hmm. is it yes helps, yes helps explain that, so. um, and to the other thing is you can also and this is just I I, I think we don't want something cumbersome as well right, right. right. Um, but I think also too when we look at it um, think about um, do we want to add some smart goals that align with the strategic plan I'm, I'm not suggesting many. I don't think you should have more than three to five. Sure. But yes. you might, we might want to think about that if we want to pull a couple things from our strategic plan to put in there because that is our guiding I completely um, agree. Mm -hmm. document. You know, because that, that back end of the one we did, it, I, I just I, really yeah. didn't think it matched what we needed, but that would be absolutely if you pulled out um, what we felt was the well, most important that we wanted to focus on as a board um, and and also that helps the superintendent mm -hmm. and and the staff the staff, the staff know right. where our thinking is and and I think that's um, 
That makes great sense. Well, I think when you have your strategic plan, it is over a five-year period, and it's and I think that would help say what this year because we're looking at an evaluation for one year to say what are the key areas that we're going to be focusing on that we need to make a difference. I also think that there probably are some things that might not necessarily be in the strategic plan that we would as a board and a superintendent together say these are some things we'd like to make sure we do get accomplished. Um, whether it's working on the board relationship, whether you know what are the things that might be different each year, but to have those things at the back that is a part of this establishing the next year evaluation, these are the things we want to focus on in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and then I to totally your point, agree. putting that, in the, and that we've, we're all on board with that, and then that feeds into what we have. Because I think that's the one thing that's lacking in Lakeland. I would agree with that. Yes. I would agree with that. And I think we also, as far as a process, um, I think that we need to, you know, think about a, a process um, such as whether first we start with the superintendent doing a self-assessment, um, then our board doing the self-evaluation, and then we doing a summation. Um, but before we do our self-board evaluation, we in turn have um, the superintendent and his staff um, come together and give us a realization of those goals before we fill our, our evaluation. I think that, that we have the, super the goals at the back yes. for the, that we established. Well, because I think personally, the retreat was great, but everything was backwards for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have been able to hear the staff talk about how we, what we've done to accomplish the, the goals of the strategic plan. And what plan. we're going to be doing. Before yeah. I did his evaluation. That's, that's, that's a very valid point. So that's what I'd like to see is our superintendent do what a self-assessment. We then have the superintendent and his staff come back with the realization of their goals and talk to us. Um, we also receive a superintendent's report. That is aligned right. with those goals mm -hmm. that you receive, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, if you have those in place before you do yeah, your evaluation, um, I think that would help. And then everybody on our board do um, an evaluation and we do a summation and then we meet with the superintendent and um, do, um, you know, his, his evaluation and set goals for the, for the next year. I think and that's I think a great plan. Because yeah. he doesn't currently do a self-evaluation. I did not. No. Mm -hmm. I, so think that's that's I, I think that's valuable. I think that's valuable. Another thing I'm working with Dr. Park on is she showed me what they do with the DeSoto superintendent. It's not just me that you're evaluating too, it's also my cabinet mm -hmm. and what we've accomplished and what we can do. Um, they really work together to create documentation during the year to show you here's how we're trying to achieve these goals and here's what we're working on because I think the most important thing is what I tell my principals it's not always about a test score. It's not always about a, a result for something. It's what are we doing to monitor and adjust as we're going through the process. Absolutely. And are we being uh, intensive on, on what we're doing? And so there's a lot of yeah. good documentation that she showed me with that, and I shared yes. that with you yes. too. Which you know. I think to your point would be if we had that ahead. Correct. Kind of like and almost have the too. retreat. Yeah. Yeah. And then evaluation. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying so. Yeah. It's more focused it would, on. It would yeah. be nice. I think during to have the retreat be a time of discussion for us about other topics and then have evalu again the evaluation be a separate, separate. Event because right. we, yeah. we could be discussing after we watch Bartlett and their experiment with grades that might be something we're discussing next year or some of these other things that I think come it'd up. be more valuable mm -hmm. I think yeah. it would be a better so, um, spending our time with that huh? I know one of the things I've started doing since the superintendent's report is aligned with the strategic plan is I'm saving them yes yep. so that when I get ready to do evaluation I'm going to have a I have a binder. A volume. Is that right? I have a volume of them. Yes. My binder. Yes. Yes. I think was there, is everybody sort of in agreement on that yes, process at yes. least? Yes. Yes. And, 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 and <laughs> do you feel comfortable with that process? She's still counting her money over there. Right. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to sort of. How am I going to get in her group? Wrap first? it up in that the process we're in agreement on. Yes. Um, and we'll I'll send that out so you can still look at that and, and get back to us um, as a group. And that in the meantime, everybody's going to look at um, this from New York, and they're going to look look at this piece too. This is actually good to read too, oh, yeah. as well as it talks about um, actually using data to evaluate your superintendent mm -hmm. and the pros and cons of it, which I think is a good piece of information. Mm -hmm. But at yeah. the end, it does have um, that evaluation mm -hmm. scale that I think we'd mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and um, then we also talked about adding comments to the end of yes. each section. Yes. Yeah. Okay, is everybody in agreement on that? Yes. How would, Linda, how did just logistically, so we look at this and we agree, who takes the task to pull all this together um, as a document to review? Um, 
I'll probably work with Ms. Vijay okay. and she'll put it together okay. and okay. then everybody okay. can see it and make their tweaks. Our superintendent can add his okay. comment okay. Okay. and then we can all come to just a, an agreement on it and um, that way his him, superintendent and staff will have that um, coming up for July 1 when we start the new fiscal year. So will we look at that, will we have another session where we look at that in addition to getting the update on the 2000, on the strategic plan we had talked about?